Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The osseous deformities associated with these periodontally involved teeth will be surgically managed from the palatal aspect. The periodontal probe outlines the position of the gingival margin and the area to be treated. The probe also demonstrates a pocket on the distal aspect of the first molar, which extends close to the furcation area. Both palatal and mesial pockets are present. The pocket depths are probed in the premolar region. Since these osseous defects primarily involve the palatal and proximal surfaces, a palatal flap will be used in their management instead of a gingivectomy. Note the loss of bone on the distal aspect of the first molar. A Hirschfeld silver point is present on the mesial aspect of the second premolar. After obtaining infiltration anesthesia, an initial incision is made across the tuberosity and continued onto the palatal surface of the molar and premolar teeth. This is an internal beveled incision, which is sometimes incorrectly referred to as a reverse bevel. The blade aims for the crest of the alveolar process on the palate. The primary flap is reflected with the use of a periosteal elevator. The remaining tissue left over the alveolar crest against the teeth is referred to as the secondary flap. The secondary flap is the tissue being shown with a probe. It will now be dissected away. The primary flap is held by forceps, which enables the secondary flap to be detached from the teeth with a scalpel introduced into the pocket. Further releasing of the internal or secondary flap from the tooth structure is accomplished with the ocean bean chisel and the number seven Goldman Fox knife. The ocean bean chisel is now being used. The number seven Goldman Fox gingivectomy knife relieves the secondary flap from its attachment to the alveolar process. A hemostat removes the secondary flap, which is then discarded. A partial thickness buckle flap distal to the last molar is being freed with a beaver scalpel blade. This will be subsequently used to cover the bone in this area. An internal beveled incision is now created along the buckle aspect, which preserves the remaining attached gingiva. This flap approach enables the clinician to gain access to the underlying alveolar process, preserve the remaining gingiva, and eliminate the pockets. Any osseous correction that is necessary can be performed after the flap is reflected. The flap is reflected with a periosteal elevator. The ocean bean chisel is utilized to free the inner lining of the pockets. A number
Number 11 Goldman Fox knife removes this loosened pocket lining which remained after the flap had been reflected. Any residual tags of tissue are then eliminated with the number four Goldman Fox curette. It is important that these be removed to prevent overgranulation of soft tissue. The distal wedge of tissue is now excised from behind the last molar. This will permit access to the osseous deformity at this site. It will also facilitate the approximation of buccal and lingual flaps. The alveolar process can be seen distal to the last molar. in this area is penetrated by the periodontal probe. It is noted that there is a greater depth on the distal aspect of the distal buccal root of the first molar than on the direct buccal. The probe traces the height of the alveolar crest as it moves toward the first premolar area. The probe is placed into the bony defect between the first and second premolars. A vertical spillway will be created in the interdental areas between the first and second premolars and between the first molar and the second premolar. A spillway will also be created between the mesial and distal buccal roots of the first molar. A shallow infrabony defect is present on the distal aspect of the first premolar. Because of its form and depth, it will be eradicated. The contour on the palatal surface of the premolar molar region is noted. A slight penetration on the mesial furcation of the molar can be made. A diamond cutting instrument is used to contour the alveolar process. Water spray prevents overheating of the osseous tissue. A vertical spillway is created in the interdental septum between the first and second premolar. The same type of spillway is also established in the alveolar process between the second premolar and the first molar. These interdental grooves will provide a more self-cleansing soft tissue morphology. The periodontal probe demonstrates the flatness of the interdental septum and tucking in of the interdental alveolar crest. An ocean bean chisel is used to improve the osseous form. The 
needle stat chisel used from the buckle aspect improves the contour of the interdental septum. There is a slight rise occlusally to the interdental septa between the first premolar, second premolar, and the first molar. In order to create this type of osseous contour, it is necessary to remove a slight amount of the thin alveolar process on the buccal surface of these teeth. Hand instruments are used whenever possible, since they are less traumatic to the alveolar process. The probe demonstrates the rise of the interdental septa and the thinness of the alveolar crest on the buccal aspect. This type of bony form is conducive to physiologic gingival architecture. A rotating round diamond stone is now used to contour the palatal bone. The alveolar process is thinned and an interdental spillway is created between these posterior teeth. The alveolar process distal to the last molar is checked to make sure that there is no bony deformity present. The palatal flap is positioned to ensure that adequate coverage of the underlying alveolar process can be obtained with minimal tension being placed on the flap. Since the flap is slightly longer than desired, it is shortened in the molar region. This will prevent any residual pocket depth on the distal surface of the palatal root of the first molar. The length of the flap is checked on the second premolar. It is then sutured in position. This flap covers the underlying alveolar process and does not leave any long, raw areas exposed as with the gingivectomy procedure. It also closely adapts the gingival tissue to the root surface. A final suture was placed in the distal wedge area to coapt these buccal and lingual tissues. The use of the isobutyl cyanoacrylate secures the buccal flap and assures its retention in position. This tissue adhesive, provided by Ethicon Incorporated of Somerville, New Jersey, polymerizes within 30 seconds in the oral environment. Having fixed the buccal flap, a vertical incision is made in the forcation area between the mesial and distal buccal roots to allow the soft tissue to follow the contour of the roots. Isobutyl cyanoacrylate is again deposited on the buccal aspect to secure these areas. The excess is removed. A periodontal dressing of the Bear Sumner formula is placed over the operative site and locked interproximally with college pliers. This surgical dressing is a non eugenal type. It is reinforced by the Kirkland Pact and covered with surgical foil. The dressing will be replaced and the sutures removed within one week. Six weeks later, the tissues are seen to be healing well. There is an adequate zone of gingiva. The periodontal probe traces the outline of the gingival margin, showing that physiologic gingival architecture is present. Probing demonstrates shallow sulci present on the buccal surfaces. The palatal area shows that the tissue distal to the molar has healed well.
It is tucked into the distal furcation. The palatal tissues are healing well with shallow sulci present. The rise of the interdental papillae is noted. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.